have to talk to you guys about something, all right, okay? I've been getting a ton of comments of you guys commenting, Sam, why are you making FTK videos? So you got a problem with that, bro? Come face me in the flipping ring, bro. I watched Creed like four times, bro. <laughs> Many of y'all got a problem. Come <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, guys. I love you guys. I'm the type of dude that would avoid all conflicts as soon as I possibly can, man. Anyway, guys, as titled this video, this video is gonna be the top 10 Yu-Gi-Oh! FTKs of all time. And good news, this is gonna be the last FTK video of 2018. And for those of you who are wondering what the term FTK stands for, in Yu-Gi-Oh! stands for first turn kill. And if you guys are wondering what the heck first turn kill is, is basically when you first turn kill your opponent. In Yu-Gi-Oh! you gotta just, you know, pow, 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 your opponent as quickly as possible. For those of you who are new to the game, you're probably like, yo, how the heck do you deal 8,000 damage to your opponent first turn? Like, oh my god. Welcome to the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! where Solitaire is your best friend. All FTKs accomplish the same thing, so I don't really have a particular from 1 to 10, which is best or worst. They were all really consistent during their time. And before I get started with this video, make sure you guys get the awesome Dark Mission Girl playmat today at TeamSamuraiX1.com. If you don't have her in your hands, I don't know what the heck you're doing, bro. You need this beautiful girl in your hands right now, guys. To celebrate the holiday season, make sure you guys get this mat. I'll leave a link to my website, TX1.com, and make sure you guys use my coupon code, TXS15, for 15% off your entire order, and it's gonna be the last day to use that coupon code, okay? So make sure you guys go to TX1.com right now. Go, 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 go. So to start off with the top 10 FTKs, let's introduce the very first one, the Cannon Soldier FTK. And like I said, this year was the year of FTK. So many FTK was introduced this year to the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And Firewall Dragon FTK was probably one of the most annoying things that we have ever seen in 2018. If you guys do not know what Firewall Dragon's effect, you guys have probably been living under a rock for the past year, but this card literally broke every single deck in today's meta. Broke Gokis. It enables you to loop like 10 different cards at your opponent's hand. Firewall Dragon was just really problematic this year, and it's one of the cards that actually helped facilitate literally everything. And one of the most annoying things that it actually helped facilitate was the Cannon Soldier FTK. And combining Firewall Dragon with the new release archetype, Dangerous, make the deck even more broken than it already is. Not only is Firewall Dragon really important for this FTK, the other two main facilitators that actually help Firewall do the FTK is obviously Cannon Soldier, and you guys all know what Cannon Soldier did. This card allowed you to burn your opponent's life points for 500 by tributing one monster on the field, and the monster that you attribute is obviously Graffa. And once you tribute Graffa to the graveyard, Firewall Dragon is gonna trigger off his effect to special summon a dark world monster from your hand. And at this point, they'll just activate Grappa's effect to bounce back the dark world monster to summon back Grappa, and then you'll just use uh, Cannon Soldier's effect once again to basically tribute Grappa, you know, Firewall Dragon will trigger its effect to summon, and then yada, 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 you're consistently burning your opponent for 500 damage until your opponent's life points reach zero. Since the danger archetype is still a thing, we can move on to the number nine. The number nine spot, we got the Slash Draw FTK. With Firewall Dragon being gone, Slash Draw FTK is a thing. And what the Slash Draw FTK is, is you utilize the Danger Engine to basically just dig through your entire deck, combining with Straw Yuja to help basically help you draw into your combo pieces and you're playing multiple Slash Draw in the deck. So each time you draw off Saruja, you're gonna be able to see your draw cards like Allure Darkness. You're able to see cards like the beginning and at the end. And then you're able to stack back Slash Draw to the bottom of your deck so you know exactly when to uh, basically uh, draw a slash draw. Uh, slash draw basically lets you mill a card and then draw a card. And if you draw a slash draw, you destroy all cards on the field. And then your opponent takes 2,000 damage for each card destroyed. And what this deck accomplished was that you're actually able to give your opponent a monster on the first turn with summon sorcerers or grinder golem. And then you just basically just dig through your deck with all the danger monsters. And then at the end, you just activate slash draw, you know, to ditch a card of your hand, mill one card because your opponent will control one card. And then you'll draw one card. And since you Stack your deck with Saruja, the card that you're gonna draw off the Slash Draw is gonna be Slash Draw, right? So you're gonna send the Slash Draw to the graveyard and then you're gonna destroy all cards on the board and then your opponent will take, you know, about 12,000 damage on the very first turn. Another new FTK that was introduced this year in 2018 was the Pendulum Magician FTK. And if you guys are wondering, Sam, what the heck is Pendulum Magician FTK? The first time that this deck topped uh, in 2018,
team was in YCS Atlanta by Kobe Potts. And this guy uh, was the first one to actually top with his deck in this year. And since the release of Electromite, Electromite literally broke Pendulums. Combining Electromite with Starving Venom Fusion Dragon literally broke the deck. What you would do with this deck is that you would constantly uh, use Starving Venom's effect to copy Lyraless Lucinia in the graveyard to basically burn your opponent's life points. And Metagill had an amazing one percent effect where you can deal 500 life points to your opponent for this card's level. Since you copied Independent Nightingale's effect, Starving Venom is a level eight monster. So eight times five is 4,000. So once you copied uh, Independent Nightingale's effect, you would deal 4,000 damage to your opponent because Starving Venom had eight stars. And then you'll make a second Starving Venom, okay, to target, uh, you know, Lucinia in the graveyard to deal another 4,000 to your opponent. You know, that TK was actually a thing and it was really scary this year. One of the most famous FTK that this game has ever seen, this FTK is called Empty Jar FTK. And for those of you who are new to the game, you're probably wondering, Sam, what the heck is Empty Jar FTK? Well, let me educate you for a second, all right? Let's go back in time. For those of you who do not know, burning your opponent's life points wasn't the only way to FTK your opponent. One of the win conditions that you can actually accomplish with Yu-Gi-Oh! is by decking your opponent out. So if your opponent cannot draw cards on their draw phase, okay, of their turn, they automatically lose a duel. You're actually able to use Morphing Jar multiple times in one turn to basically make your opponent draw their entire deck. Set Morphing Jar on your first turn and use cards like Book of Taiyu. Book of Taiyu lets you flip a monster face up uh, on the field. So you're gonna flip Morphing Jar, Morphing Jar will activate this effect. Both you and your opponent will send five cards and then you just draw five new cards and then you activate Book of Moon. Okay, to flip Morphing Jar face down, activate the second Book of Taiyu, basically flip back Morphing Jar, your opponent will draw five and uh, your opponent will draw five again. You'll have cards like Card Destruction, your opponent will lose five, they'll draw five again, and activate Book of Taiyu, flip Morphing Jar, and then you just basically repeat that process until they have zero cards left in their deck. You also got Book of Eclipse as well. Book of Eclipse does the exact same thing. Flip all monsters face down. And you just use Book of Taiyu again. Flip your monster, your opponent sends five cards, draw five cards, until your opponent has zero cards left in their deck, and then you just simply say, it's your move. And then your opponent, since they cannot draw on the draw phase, your opponent automatically loses the duel. Next, we got the Magical Explosion FTK. And this FTK was actually pretty annoying, okay? And I don't know if you guys remember this, you know, classic Yu-Gi-Oh meme, but there was this like world's most serious Yu-Gi-Oh player where he played at the locals and he was just like, I, I set three cards face down, I end my turn, and then he goes like, on your draw phase, flip, flip triple, blasting on the ruins. That's 9,000 damage, game, right? Do you, you guys remember that meme? To draw the final really two cards in my deck. <laughs> Setting three cards face down. You know you got four darks my turn is over. You know you Activate, darks three blasting the ruins. <laughs> if you guys don't remember that meme, you guys are definitely not playing the game for long enough. And for those of you who do not know what Magical Explosion does is you basically activate this card while you have no cards in your hand, you deal 200 damage to your opponent for each spell card in the graveyard. Since your deck is all draw cards, you're gonna be basically drawing your entire deck until you see Magical Explosion or Blasting of the Ruins and you're gonna be having no cards in your hand is because you got cards like Into the Void. Royal Magic Library was one of the most important uh, cards to facilitate this combo. If you guys do not know what Royal Magical Library does is that each time you activate a spell card, place one counter in this card, you can Move three counters from this card to draw one card. Since your entire deck is all spell cards and all draw cards, you're gonna be basically drawing more cards using uh, Royal Magical Library, which is pretty annoying. So this card literally helps you get one step closer into your FTK. And then you got cards like Magical Mallet, Reload, to just basically just keep reloading, to just basically keep mulliganing your hand until you see all your draw cards. And by activating Reload or Magical Mallet, you're basically just adding spell cards to the graveyard, right? So it's actually pretty problematic because you're always gonna see your draw cards. Once you draw into your magical explosion and also your blasting of the ruins, once you have enough spell cards in the graveyard and you're able to set cards like magical explosion and then on your opponent's turn, you're actually able to end your opponent's life by just flipping magical explosion. Next, we got the magical scientist FTK. And for those of you who are not familiar with this FTK, this FTK was actually really insane during its time. For those of you who do not know, magical scientist till this day is still on the forbidden and limited list. And I remember back in the day, me watching Galactic God's video. Galactic God, if you're watching this video. Shouts to you, man. I watched you ever since I was like 11 years old, man. Magical Scientist. What this card does is that you pay a thousand light points, especially on the fusion monster from your fusion deck. And last but not least, you would need a card called Last Will. 
okay? Basically, if you guys do not know what Last Will, Last Will has an amazing ability where it reads, if a monster on your side of the field was sent to your graveyard this turn, you special one monster with an attack 1500 points or less from your deck once during this turn, then shuffle your deck. So what you would do is you special summon Gilosaurus, and then you would activate Last Will, then you would tribute summon uh, for Catapult Turtle by tributing Gilosaurus that you have on the board. Once you tribute summon for Catapult Turtle, Last Will uh, will activate its effect as a monster was sent from the field to the graveyard, you can basically special summon a monster with 15 or less attack from your deck. And you're gonna special summon Magical Scientist. And then you'll pay 1,000 life points to special summon Dark Flare Knight from your extra deck. You'll tribute Dark Flare Knight to burn 1,100 damage to your opponent uh, with Catapult Turtle. And back in the day, Catapult Turtle did not get an errata. Catapult Turtle was not once per turn. So you can activate this card multiple times in the exact same turn, which is pretty crazy. And then you'll repeat this step two more times, burning a total of 3,300 damage to your opponent. Then you'll use the Magical Scientist for the fourth time, the special of an Ocean Roaring Snake. Then you will deal 1,050 damage to your opponent, and then you do this step three more times for Ocean Roaring Snake. And then you'll activate Magical Scientist for the seventh time, and a special man Punished Eagle from your extra deck, and then you'll use Catapult Turtle to tribute the Punished Eagle, and then your opponent will burn an additional 1,050 to your opponent. And at this point, you already paid 7,000 light points to activate Magical Scientist effect, and then your opponent has 500 light points left. You're gonna tribute off Magical Scientist and also Catapult Turtle to deal the remaining 500 light points to your opponent. Opponent, which is absolutely insane. So that's a really cool FTK in the past involving magical scientists. Similar to the Cannon Soldier FTK, we have the Infernity FTK. The Infernity FTK accomplishes the exact same thing as Cannon Soldier, where you deal 8,000 or more light points to your opponent. And you can accomplish this by constantly bringing back Infernity monsters from your graveyard slash banish zone by utilizing Necromancer's effect. And a way to actually special summon back Infernity monsters uh, from your banish zone was using card like Levier. And then once you have enough level three monsters, on the board, you're actually able to make cards like Invoker, and then Invoker is able to special an Amazonist Archer from your deck, and then you're gonna be tributing your monsters on your field to consistently burn damage to your opponent until they have zero light points. So this FTK was really devastating during its time. Next FTK is called Gallus the Star Beast FTK. So Gallus the Star Beast was one of the most important cards to actually help facilitate this FTK, combining off with Quirky Mirror Doom and also Genix Birdman. And what this FTK did was pretty insane. If you guys do not know what Gallus the Star Beast effect is, you can reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's a monster, you special summon Gallus the Star Beast, tear side of the field, and you'll burn your opponent's light points uh, according to the level of that monster's times 200. And, and ideally, if you're playing the Gallus the Star Beast FTK, your entire deck was monster mash. So that means that every single card in your deck had to be monsters so that way that you can consistently activate Gallus the Star Beast effect. Quirky Mirror Doom has an amazing ability where it negates the effect of light and dark monsters that activates during the main phase. So what you would do is your normal summon uh, Quirky Mirror Doom, activate Gallus the Star Beast effect, summon Gallus, and then you'll burn your opponent's life points according to the monster that you revealed uh, from the top of your deck. And it's gonna be monsters is because you're playing a monster mash deck. And then what you're gonna do next that you're gonna activate Birdman, which is a cost to return Gallus to hand. And Genix Island Birdman has the effect where you can return one monster from the field to your hand, especially than Birdman. But since Birdman is a dark monster, Quirky Marrow Doom will negate Birdman's effect. So since you return Gallus to your hand and Genix Island Birdman was negated, Birdman will stay in the hand and, and then Gallus will go back into your hand, okay? So now you will summon Gallus Star Beats again, reveal a monster, burn your opponent's life points, okay? Summon Gallus again and constantly just keep doing that until you basically burn your opponent's life points to zero. Next, we got Frogburn FTK. This FTK was absolutely nasty. Frogburn FTK was the reason why Substitute is now banned. And I believe this deck won Worlds or made it to Worlds with Galileo. So the way that this FTK worked was that it uses a card called Mass Driver. Mass Driver has amazing ability where you can tribute one monster on your side of the field to inflict 400 damage to your opponent's life points. And this is when Substitute comes into play. And Substitute has amazing ability where you can tribute one monster, the special one frog monster for your deck, except for Frog the Jam. So you use Substitute, which allows you to special in all the frog monsters for your deck to feel ruled and told in for the FTK. Once you bring out all the frogs from your deck, you're going to use Mass Driver to tribute each monster from the graveyard. Once you have no more frogs left, you're going to keep special something rolling toting and tribute it off with Mass Driver until your opponent has zero light points. And the deck also had cards like Salvage, which recycles back your frogs to your hand. Off Substitute, you'll summon cards like Swap Frog to dump more frogs to the graveyard. You'll activate cards like Salvage to basically add back those frogs from the graveyard to your hand. It was really consistent with Substitute and was just 
just really annoying because Sunstone was able to bring all the frog monsters from your deck. And once you tribute all the frogs from your field, you're gonna use Ronin Totem's effect, 400, bring back Ronin Totem once again, and just keep repeating that process until your opponent has zero light points. Last but not least, probably the most iconic FTK that this game has ever seen, the Exodia FTK. Exodia definitely is one of my favorite monsters of all time, and the fact that you can just draw all five pieces of Exodia during that era was just absolutely devastating, okay? Can you imagine you watching the anime and actually playing that deck in real life? Do you guys remember when, you know, Kaiba got destroyed by Yugi because Yugi drew all five pieces of Exodia? Do you guys remember that? Okay, yeah, Yugi drew the five pieces of Exodia on Kaiba. That just, that, that, that scene alone, that scene alone completed my childhood. The unstoppable Exodia. Ah, impossible. And once Weevil, that, the freaking, the freaking bug, the freaking bug threw the five pieces of Exodia in the ocean. Yo, I, 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 when I was eight years old, I wanted to just, uh, guys, I kid you not, bro. Like that episode, like I was like, no. There are so many variations of this deck, uh, which makes the deck really iconic. Most decks often utilize different draw engines to help see the Exodia pieces faster. So like I said, trade in uh, cards like, you know, Magical Mallet, cards like Roll Magical Library, Pot of Greed was in existence back in the day, uh, Graceful Charity, the deck was just super duper consistent. Uh, but all their versions obviously use Roll Magical Library to help you draw into your pieces. Trade in, Boken Bamboo Sword, Magical Mallet, Reload, etc. All those cards help you see the FTK craziest win conditions of all time okay so being able to draw all five pieces to win the duel man bro holy macaroni not styling on your opponent right there draw all five pieces you win the game flex on them guys flex on them if there are any ftks that i actually left out in this video please leave it in the comment section below obviously there are so many ftks out there i obviously cannot list them all but if you guys have any cool interesting uh, ftks leave it in the comment section below i would love to see them and that's pretty much it this is your boy sam from team sound sam signing out thank you guys so much for watching this video i love you guys and i'll see you guys next time all right guys peace i feel like usain in the cheetah print uh -huh. Talk fresh game, I don't need a minute uh, R.I.P. the game, shh, I need a minute uh, Okay, let's proceed with it I'm in the house, got to deep with it These bozos always sneak this And they taking shots, I'ma keep with it Like, no, no, this league business Ooh,